Hello guys, I'm Raider and welcome to another YouTube video on the Sentinel Initiative. So, I'm back again with Surviving Mars. Haven't done this one on the channel so far, and it's a game I just I recently picked up during Steam during the um, Paradox Steam sale. So I thought I'd take a look at it. I haven't really seen much on it. I noticed it a while ago on Steam. Um, the DLCs I haven't got those, so I might pick those up at, at a later date. I haven't had much of a play around with this game yet. I have had a few attempts and it hasn't ever gone well. And this is actually my second attempt at recording this episode. My microphone unfortunately died the first time. So if I'm a bit, if I seem a bit edgy, dad why? And I'm, it's not the case I'm recording this in the middle of the, de in the middle of the day. I'm recording this quite late, to be honest. And it's simply because I want to get this recorded now so I can edit it tomorrow morning. So I can get it uploaded to you guys at some point tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. Anyway, let's get straight into it. I'm going to do the same thing I did last time I attempted to record it, which is actually stick every single possible thing I could put on random, on random. Uh, I did prefer that one. That's my favourite one of those. So... Yeah, I'm going to leave this as it was before. But so, effectively, what happened last time is that the difficulty just ramped up. So let's see. So at the moment, this is the only bit that I'm actually going to do personally. Yeah, that also seems okay. Because there are things which can be a bit of a nuisance to deal with. Right, so it looks like I've, got, oh, I've not got very much funding at all, have I? <laughs> Bethesda. <laughs> uh, Paradox is funny sometimes. I love how that's one of the random names. I don't need an orbit probe. Oh, this is going to be a bit of a... This is definitely going to be a bit of a nightmare. What happened? Sorry, there was a spider with three legs just crawling up my wall. What happened to you? You've always not bothering me. Um, is a bit. I'm not arachnophobic, or at least I'm not very arachnophobic, but... Yeah, it's just odd seeing a spider with three legs just crawling up... Sorry, with four legs crawling up a wall. Three on one side, one on the other. It's a very odd motion. Especially when it has... Pin visible pincers. Defined pincers, pincers is more what I should say. Anyway, moving on. I mean, I even hit random with this one as well. I just picked the first one I thought. Okay, the last one I saw was 305% difficulty. And that was actually a decent challenge. This is 415% difficulty. Yeah, okay, switching. Uh, okay, I'm fine with that. I mean, seriously, 400% difficulty. Yeah. Oh, pass. I mean, I struggled enough with 305. 320 should be too much of a step up from that. Welcome still. to Mars. Okay. Everyone at Mission Control is impatient to see the rocket touching down and unloading its precious cargo. Our remotely controlled eyes and, ha eyes and hands on the red planet. The drones and rovers. Our goal is to secure a, fo a foothold for humanity by building the first Martian dome. The daunting endeavor will allow the brave pioneers, the founders, to settle on Mars and prove that the colony is sustainable. But until then, we have to make sure the colony has enough construction resources, water, oxygen, and power. Mission sponsor: Church of the New Ark, Commander Profile, Politician. Great. I don't like politicians. Mm, not taking my head people on. Right, okay, let's get some research going. Alright, so first one we'll take going. That one. I actually don't usually do this one. 
Martian peasants. I love how there's like lots of quotes being used. Well, I have noticed that actually not all of these ones up here are actually the same. All right, let's see what. Okay. That's actually a nice area to build. Alright, so we've got 100 there, another 6 there, 100 here, 90 here, 79, 60, 21. There we are, I'll stick with that. Let's have a look at our mission objectives. Produce food, 50 food, have 10 founders at 90 comfort. At 90 comfort. I have 20 Martian colonists by the end of Sol 50, 20 Martian born, produce 40 electricity, have 120 colonists with all needs above 80. Okay, this is actually going to be difficult. That one's going to be difficult. No, sorry, not that one. This one's going to be difficult. The rest of them shouldn't be too difficult to achieve eventually. All colonists have the religious trait. Birth rate it's doubled. Hydroponic farms performance reduced by 50. Oh, great. Just what I needed. Let me give you a brief rundown of what happened in my last attempt before we record. So everything was going well. First colony set up. Sorted. Go, go, going well. Food shortage. My solution. More colonists, because they have enough botanists. More colonists, more hydroponics. <sighs> the food shortage didn't end there. It just kept getting worse and worse and worse to the point where I was literally bringing in a whole shipments of nothing but food to the point where I was running out of every other resource because the colonists just were eating everything. There's all sorts of people just dying in the streets of starvation, people offing themselves, which is something that won't happen with this one at least, because of this thing. Essentially, religious, religious traits means that even if they get really depressed, they will not off themselves. It means that you basically can don't have to worry about anyone dying out of anything other than old age or starvation. Which I actually don't know in this game, is starvation considered a natural death? Because there are two types of death in this game which is natural and non-natural. But it doesn't define what the different which ones are and which ones aren't. So I think I have to look into that. But I know that dying in old age is a natural death. So, let's actually get this rocket down then. I think I'm actually gonna put the rocket I want to get rid of these hints at some point. I'm going to put the rocket down about here. Actually, I'm going to stick it down. I'm going to stick it down here. Mm, yeah, there. That should give me plenty of space to actually work with. Let's get to building some stuff. So I need storage. Universal Depot. 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 Okay, I'm gonna wait a little bit to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna need some power. So roughly here is where I want to start building it.
Japón. Y Alaska. Actually, I don't need that many. Alright, now let's get this going into production. I'm gonna actually slow it down for a bit here, because uh, otherwise I will end up not being actually able to get any power from this set. I'm going to stick it there. I seriously want to know. Hmm. They need to get metals, don't they? Yeah, they need to harvest metals to actually build this stuff. Now that's going to be painful. Get more like metal. Oh, it's not working. Obviously, there's not enough power. See, so, yeah, I actually should have gotten that transport. I'm thinking now maybe I did make a mistake in getting rid of transport because yeah actually there's no meta there's not very much surface metal at all here is there just looking at it I mean seriously research corporation a new deep space telescope will be launched to scan the cosmos from a point even further out than Mars the company behind the telescope, Alamba Industries, has partnered with our sponsor to share the financial burden of the deep, of the deep space launch. Our sponsor, not one to waste an opportunity to help their most ambitious project, since the splitting of the launch bill will basically pay for a single supply pod they can fill with cargo of our choosing. A new Deep Space Telescope will be launched to scan the cosmos for a point even further up than Mars. I don't get how that actually managed to get us a new lot of supplies. To be honest. Oh well, I'm not going to argue about it. I was just saying how I probably could have done with the um, sh with the um, what's it called um, transport. So I'm going to grab the transport. I was about to say shuttle, but that would have been wrong. Drone hub. I don't need it for now. Why are you guys not built? Oh, that's painful. Okay, let's rewrap power around that then, shall we? That's actually a nuisance. I cannot say I'm happy about that one. This will take more trips. So, low resources, metals, unload. 
that is just a bit disappointing to be honest, the fact that I have, without any starting concrete, there's not really much you can do. That's the first time I think I've ever had to go around like that. So that's only the first bit of the... Great, yeah, I almost got rid of the thing I just built. I do need to find a place for this waste rock. Right, let's get a specialized deep for metal and one for milestone concrete. achieved. Sector scanned. Right, found water on Mars. I get no research from the sponsor. <laughs> this is going to be painful. I wonder why they said it was 320% difficulty. So we've got some water over there. I'm thinking it's literally in case oh, I literally move half the operation all the way over there instead. Wow, I'm really glad I didn't start over there. Okay. So more metal has now become apparent. So drone hub. That's good enough for me. Let's get some power over there.
There we go. Sector scanned. Anomaly found. Okay, so there's more anomalies. Ah, metal deposits. Cool. But those are below the surface, so I'm going to need to mine those out later. So what have I got now? So I'm going to need some... Okay, so water extractor. Right, so. Milestone achieved. The rover went dark for five hours. When it rebooted, it confirmed it had come into contact with an unusually high voltage electrical charge. The red alert was sounded immediately after we lost contact with the RC Explorer vehicle. Five long hours of fear and desperation ended with the reinstating of data feed. A wave of relief passed through the crowd of scientists gathered at the control center. The telescopic drill used to probe the crust and the top at the anomaly site disturbed a layer of magnetic mag magnetite rich rocks, the source of the electric electric charge. The rover is still functional, but it would take time before its locomotion systems are fully restored. The operators turned the defeat into a victory, devoting the unexpected time window to studying the magnetic properties of the Martian crust. The RC Explorer has not functioned. It has to be repaired by drives. Um. Effect 50% cost reduction for the following technologies. Low G drive, faster drones and rovers, autonomous sensors, sensor towers require no power or maintenance. Effect, gain 2 million funding. Well, it's a decent thing it's not, no, oh, no, it's really far away, isn't it? Where is it? It's out. No, it's actually within the thing, isn't it? Yeah. So I'll just... Eventually some will repair it. Right, so... Go away. I'm missing concrete. Okay. And I have ran out of... Nothing yet. Water tower. Production. Sector scanned. Anomaly found. So this is back up and running. Got an anomaly. Right. Okay. So air production. Right. Let's get this cable sorted. I haven't quite got enough power at the moment, have I? You should be able to output enough power to get something running, shouldn't you? It must be connected. Ah, oh, it isn't built yet. And neither is wise. 
Okay, let's get this thing. Okay, let's go ahead and scan that one, then scan that one. And then tech. So, water reclamation, decommission protocol. That's going to be an important one to do. Transport optimization. So, the, that's the next one. That's going to be an important one due to different situations. Right. Hmm. Right, you can excuse me for a minute. So, I've got something I need to do, so I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. Uh, I just have to go do something. So, where was I? Oh, yes. Making sure that this is all going well. Founders that now have 20 Martian born colonists by the end of Sol 50. detected a spike in temperature. The data tells us it was ignited magnesium compounds. We're still waiting for confirmation, but the preliminary results are clear. There are signs of chemical built burning indicating a combustible material in contact with the probe. The mechanical friction on the drilling head must have ignited the magnesium. What a great discovery. Scientists on Earth had long planned the creation of jet engines that could burn the carbon dioxide in the Martian atmosphere with the use of magnesium powder. With abundant, amount, with abundant amounts on site, the research teams could begin preliminary testing on a working prototype right away. Okay, that's quite interesting. Alright, let's get back into... Any new anomalies? No, not at the moment. Let's call you back. I'm trying to space everything out a bit for the simple reason of if asteroid attacks, if asteroids do occur, asteroid strikes do occur, then it'll be easy to deal with if everything's more spread out and isn't at threat of hitting everything else. Right, let's add in a few more set panels. almost completely filled out the metals depot. Oh. 
I'm going to move the metal depot up here because this is where it's going to be more needed. Well, I'm going to move all the depots up here actually. I'm going to leave a fuel one down by where the rocket is. But all the other ones are going to actually start moving up here. I'm going to need another metal one, actually. So, how much more have you got there? One. So, pretty much as soon as you start moving on it, I need to unload over here. I'm thinking that now would actually be a good time to actually start bringing partners down. Because I need to get all this, I need to get this research going. This isn't important. That is so. We started producing fuel now. The question is how much fuel we're gonna need. If I put a colony here, it's got metal deposits and I can actually get some it's got a decent flat surface as well in the area, so I don't have to worry about too much. But it has got a problem of there's not really anything near it to really boost very much of it. Hmm. Let's see, does it tell us actually how many... Okay, so yeah, it does tell you how many we need. Hmm. So research, free per shift. So I'll probably have that open for one shift today. So only three scientists. Let's actually start getting this. Lambda, re Lambda Industries Deep Space Telescope is performing as planned. What isn't performing as well is, is data analysis. The amount of information the telescope is sending towards Earth is mind boggling and they have issue issues processing all of it. Lambda Industries is officially extending a request for help with some of the data analysis. Go. Research the analyzed space telescope text to continue. Where is this? Great, that's gonna be a painful thing to do. Basically, I'm gonna need colonists down pretty much ASAP. Sector scan. Select a sector to scan. Okay. 
Actually, wait, let's cancel all of those. Okay, let's pause it for a second. Concrete, concrete, There we go. Right. So let's see. Resupply. Okay. Well, I'll order a resupply rocket once this one's actually gone. Domes. Um. Hmm. Okay, so I'm trying to see what all the um, hockeys are. That's cables only, that one. There we go, so V is pipes. That is rather odd, to be honest. Now I do need to connect that to um, the water supply as well, actually. That's full. That is already full. Sector scan. I think we need more polymers. G7, let's have a look at G7. So what's that? Surface polymers or It has only three polymers, but it's something. That'd be enough to get this finished. I think. Yeah, if we four more polymers over here, that means we have enough to actually finish that. So I'm going to close that and go and scrap that one. I actually find out something very interesting during the last recording attempt. Solar panels can actually be placed inside of biodomes. It left me wondering what else can actually be put inside of domes to protect them from external effects. I'm not actually sure how much can be put inside of domes. I'm pretty sure you can't put the water towers inside of domes, which is unfortunate. I need to bring this car back, don't I? Any new discoveries of anomalies? No, there's nothing. I 
I should probably put another... That's rotation, of course it is. I already need that one. No, that's... Is that a solar panel? That's a small solar panel. I guess um, the charging stations are not mapped to anything then. Resources are low. So I've got one down there, I'm going to stick one up here as well. I just want to stick it there. So if I had the upgrade that I was after, this is something I'm talking about. So, meteor storms. The region, the region is about to experience a meteor shower storm. Buildings directly hit by meteors will need to be will be in need of repairs in order to function again, while pipes and cables will get destroyed. Or if it's hit by meteors, will also need repairs, while drones may become irreversibly damaged. Meteor storms cannot be avoided, but some good practices may even, some practices may minimise their damage potential, such as not clustering vital buildings next to each other, pipe and cable redundancy, and researching the tech for MDS lasers from the physics field. Meteor defense system. Probably. So it's 17 hours of notice. I wouldn't say my buildings are too clustered. I mean these might be too close to kept close together. I mean, I've got two separate power supplies. Oh isn't that nothing really that actually clustered together at all? I've just got a bit of space between it. Um, the only thing that I might have a little problem with is actually the cables. And how much more do I need for that one polymer? Which I apparently have that one polymer. I have no idea where it is. Alright, it's over here. And so I'm going to launch you now. Milestone achieved. You can see why I don't need this so much. I'm actually going to turn this thing off because I don't need it running at all. So this is really important because it stores power. Instead of you wasting said power, you actually get to store it and you don't need it so much. So, I might be able to put in a few colonists before the end of this episode, but I doubt it. Yeah, so. Let's just see how this goes, shall we? Oh, there's a research site over there. There we go, the first few meteorites are landing. I'm actually going to slow this down a bit so I actually have time to notice when they're going to hit. Complete. Fuel compression. A bit late, but okay. Alright, research. Outsourcing 200. Oh, because that's off in the night. Okay. I'm going to turn that one off at night as well.
Sector scanned. Anomaly found. Okay, let's actually build a launch pad. I'm actually trying to think now, do I need to move it so it's actually in range of the... I think I actually have to move it, otherwise it's not going to be in range of that. some resources are over here, metals, and unload it over here. I'm gonna have this, oh, I was running out all the time anyway. Let's consider running at full speed. What's up with you? Building has been turned off, okay. Yeah, that, that would make a lot of sense. A lot of sense. the completion of our first dome. Now we need to just actually get some people to live in it. We've just found the wreckage of Phobos 2. Hmm. The old pro even had some new data for us to analyze. On July 7th, 1988, the Soviet Union launched two Proton K rockets carrying the Phobos 1 and Phobos 2 probes on a course to Mars. After two craft, only only Phobos 2 reached its final destination. But contact with it was lost just before it could deliver its precious payload. Humankind will be forever grateful for the information we salvaged from its computers. In fact, locations of several anom anomalies discovered. Hint, check the map for the new locations. Anomaly found. Okay, that's quite useful. Gives me something to do with it. Milestone achieved. Shame it has to go so far out of the way though. Right, so that's now finished. Sector scanned. Let's put some things along. I want to see what can I actually put inside of this thing. So production, I can't put any of these in there. Obviously, I think I can actually put that. Maybe I'll be able to put that in there if I can actually build it. Um, Moxie, nope, that's an outside building. Oxygen tank, outside building. Water tower, outside building. Hydroponic farm I can definitely build in there. Okay, storages. Depot outside building. Production power. Solar panels I can. Large solar panels, yep. Wind turbine, definitely not. You can put the generators in there. Power activator outside building and yeah, I imagine a lot of dark stuff is. So living complex.
I need hydroponics. So yeah, this thing I can have one shift, unfortunately. So yeah, so how much more I need for this then? So, looking at everything, I need. Let's do maths. So, for the hydroponic farm, I'm going to need six. Um, what's it called? Botanists? I think it is botanists. So, I'm going to need six botanists. And for the research lab, I'm going to. Have three researchers. That's already nine. I need one person for that at least. I need one at least one medic for that as well. So six botanists, one medic. Sorry, one three researchers. That's nine. One person for that. But it doesn't matter who that is. And one medic. So I need ten. I leaves me with two. Hmm. Okay. With two extras, could be anything. Okay, let's get this rocket in. Actually, let's wait just a little bit just to get this whole thing sorted out. Because uh, I'm actually not sure exactly what I'm going to need for this. Oh, I need polymers. And I have no where I can get them from. Materials, materials, materials. Hmm. I've got a solution to this. So if I go to tab, supply pod. There we go, I'm going to call that what I need. I'm going to supply that, it's going to do that one, and then I'm going to do a passenger rocket. Okay, this is going to take a while. So, let's go to botanists first. I'm going to go for every single botanist because I need all of them. Right. Botanist. Well, the rest of the bottom says not one. There's five out of the six. Where's well, there it is? There it is. So oh, this is gonna be difficult. So you've got religious survivor, workaholic, party animal. That's actually not that bad. Alcohol has to be a dangerous one, depending on circumstances. So essentially I just need to make sure I have a place where they can drink. Right, so now I need three scientists. I can choose from scientists. So religious gamer okay, um so that's not gonna be too much of a problem to begin with. Scientists, workaholic, vegan. Not gonna be no that's a hypochondriac in their mind. Uh, scientist, enthusiast, yep. Okay, your benefits outweigh your negatives, so, and plus I have a medical thing anyway. So I have two scientists. I'm gonna take the first scientist. I don't think he's even the first scientist actually. Yeah, I have a few more scientists up here. You're good. All right, there we go. I have three of those, three of them now. Okay, now I need a medic. Medic, I have seven to choose from.
definitely the best one. Okay, so I've got all the ones that I need. Um, let's get an engineer and just someone with no. That should be good. Okay. And let's launch that one then. Launch anyway. This sh should be built in time. Let's get here. So. Yep. Huh. Until today, the only place we thought you could find Ice 15 outside of a lab was on an icy planet or a moon. And here we find it on Mars. Ice 15 is a super dense phase of water ice which is formed in extremely cold and extremely high pressure environments. It turns out that the unique geological history of Mars allowed a small quantity of Ice 15 to form under the crust. One second. Um, even though we didn't confirm any substantial deposits of water, this discovery would cause uproar in scientific communities and draw significant attention to our efforts on the red planet. Our sponsors immediately provided us with tools to discover more about the effects of Martian geology on the formation of underground ice. Right, let's get this thing up and going. Sector scanned. That's a nuisance. Right, let's get you over to scan that one. Alright, so we've got a passenger rocket on the way. Let's get stuff out of the way before the next rocket lands. Good thing is I have a small supply of food already, so actually I need to ensure that my power supply is actually decent enough. That is roughly the end of the episode. I just want to get the colonists down here just to. We've just confirmed the location of a metal rich deposit. A drilling accident turned to our advantage. We lost a probe. We lost a drilling probe whilst attempting to analyze the anomaly. The signal was suddenly lost, and we got the tingling feeling that we would get lucky with the second one. The operators were extra careful, and the second insert insertion revealed a vast network of underground cavities beneath the hard rock plate. On top of that, we managed to get in contact with the first probe, which had fallen through in another section of the crust folds. We used the two probes as triangula triangulation points for telemetry and position and pinpoints to the location of the deposit. Let's cover the metal deposit. Nice. Okay, let's get it working on the next one then. Alright, and now is the so Sector scanned. Just let's actually. I'm actually going to use you to vote all those resources. Now I'm going to have to unload over here. Right, so there we go, and now I can just drop in the colonists.
Right, so. Milestone achieved. New colonists have arrived. Our colonists are suffering from hypothermia. Already? So is this not getting enough energy? No, it really isn't. Resources are low. Yeah, I've noticed already. Okay, so I need to actually get some more sun wind turbines up and running. And let's actually get the selling generation run now. And let's stick it. Let's stick it here. Uh, that's going to be something that's going to be really useful now. I do need that. Full of hope and determination, the first founders have set foot on the red planet. Uh, the next ten souls will be diff full of difficulties and dangers, but also a great promise and opportunities. It is now up, it is now to us to prove that Mars can be a doorway to great to riches and the future of, human, of the human civilization. Even the most epic adventures begin with a simple step. So, arrival additional colonists temporarily expanded until the colony provide, proves able to sustain human life. Your founder colonists may, must survive for 10 souls before additional people can arrive. The colony will be evaluated positively before the period ends in the event the ship, first human is born on Mars. Now, that is a relief. Let's open that up, Let's open that up get some power flowing through. Right, and let's get some more crops growing. The analysis tells us that we found iridium rich sulfides. That's a real rarity on Earth. Mankind's ingenuity has found a myriad of applications. For it, Myrad? How do you pronounce that? Of applications for it, but we focus our plan on a much simpler, more vital role in our growing economy RTGs. Free energy for everyone. RTGs. I feel like I should know what that is, but I don't know what it is. If you know what that is, please put it in the comments down below. Uh, reduces the cost of physics text by 10%. Okay, so the colonists are now here. So we've got an engineer. Okay, so I'll do a little bit between now and the next episode, but the colonists are now down. They are suited and booted. So, yeah, I'm going to pause it before anything else happens to distract me. Yes, we have unfortunately reached the end of this episode. That actually happened a few minutes ago, but uh, unfortunately things just kept happening so I decided to run along with it. What are the resources? Oh. So yeah. Um, I was saying, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did like it, leave a like. If you dislike it, dislike it. I don't mind. Please do whichever one you feel is more honest to you. I mean, even if you leave neither, that's still okay. As long as, as you know, preferably, I prefer to leave a like or a dislike to let me know if I'm doing something well or not. But just keep it honest. And other than that, please, please, please comment. It, in my opinion, constructive criticism is one of the most important things to help a channel grow, especially like a channel like mine, which is, although it may be a few years old, is still technically in its infancy, simply because I haven't. Personally, in the past, I haven't put much work into it, and I would love to put more work into it, and I can justify that if people are actually give me comments and actually suggest how I can improve. Please keep constructive criticism. Don't be that person who puts down something that I can't do anything about, such as, let's just say you find my voice annoying, which probably some of you may do. In which case, I can't do anything about it. I mean, if I was all, if I was already using a voice editor or editing my voice somehow, then yes, fine, put it down. But I'm not. This is what my voice actually sounds like, and there's nothing I can do about it. So unfortunately, if you dislike the way my voice sounds, 
that's just the way it is. So yes. Other than that, if you have any suggestions on what I could do during this series, please feel free to put them down and in the comment section and any advice that you have. Like I said, I only recently got this game, I'm not particularly great at it at the moment. I am happy to I'm happy to receive feedback guidance from you guys. This is as much as I'm the one actually do actually recording and showing you the content, it's also just as much down to your input as well. You you do have an input into what happens within this series. Admittedly there are things admittedly sometimes I will take advice, sometimes I won't. Depends on what I depends on depends on what I can feasibly do or what I believe will actually be beneficial. So yes, other than that, thank you very much for watching guys and please stay 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 safe and and yeah, as always I'm Raider and I'll see you guys in the next in the next video. Until then, goodbye.